Whether you've heard of him or not, you've definitely heard many of his songs. I Want It That Way, Side to Side, Tearing Up My Heart, I Want You Back, Blank Space, Dark Horse, Teenage Dream, Beauty and the Beat, Side to Side, and his most recent number one, Blinding Lights. Today we're going to talk about the one and only, the legendary, Max Martin. Working with Max is and always has been a dream. He's so talented and so chill and so humble, which is so refreshing. He's written, co-written, and produced the biggest hits of artists like Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, Ariana Grande, NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, The Weeknd, and of course, Britney Spears. He wrote his first number one when he was on vacation with his wife in Florida. He wanted to go to sleep because he was super tired and jet lagged, but he couldn't go to sleep because he had this melody going on and on in his head. So he finally got up, recorded the melody, and then the next day, as soon as he heard the melody, he came up with the lyrics, hit me baby one more time. And that's how that song was born. At the beginning, Max thought of it as an R&B song and he actually sent it to TLC, but they rejected it. They didn't like the lyrics. They thought it sounded a little bit like domestic violence, but Max stuck with his original idea of saying, hit me baby one more time because he didn't mean it literally. He meant it like impact me with your love baby one more time. Sticking to his original idea cost him one whole year in which nobody wanted the song. In the music industry, a year is a long time. But it ended up getting recorded by Britney Spears, catapulting her career, and the rest is history. Max has 23 number one hits and he's the third songwriter with the most number one hits in history, only after Paul McCartney, who has 32, and John Lennon, who has 26. On the production side though, he is the producer with the most number one hits and he's tied with George Martin, who is a producer of the Beatles. So at the moment they are tied, but this is gonna change pretty soon and it's gonna be really hard for him to lose that spot because he's got so much advantage over every other producer in the world. By the way, he's not related to George Martin, He's also not related to Ricky Martin. Actually, Martin isn't even his last name. His full name is Carl Martin Sandberg and he's from Stockholm, Sweden. You know, Sweden like H&M, Ikea, Spotify. And he surprisingly still lives there. And I say surprisingly because any other producer with the amount of fame and success that he has would have immediately moved to LA or New York. Maybe not right now at this time because it's a different time, but back then, the first thing you did was hop on a plane and go to LA, go to Hollywood. But Max has not wanted to do this because he has wanted to lead a normal life or as normal as possible when you're a millionaire producer and songwriter. He hasn't wanted the fame because he's seen firsthand what fame can do to you. And he remains humble. He doesn't even have social media like at all. But if you want to follow him on social media, the next best thing is to follow his fan page. It's run by Sabine. She has amazing content and she also has a really, really cool playlist on Spotify. I've heard a bunch of Max Martin playlists, but this one is the best because it really has every single song that Max has credits on. So I'll leave both the account and the link to the Spotify playlist down in the description below. He rarely even gives interviews. I mean, if you want information about him, you really have to dig. It's surprising being that he's so successful, but maybe that's exactly the recipe for his success. No distractions, just music. He's won the ASCAP Songwriter of the Year, not once, not twice, 11 times. And he's won five Grammys, but he's been nominated 21 times. Which, considering the amount of hits that he has, is not really that many times. I'm kind of offended. <laughs> I feel like he should have a lot more Grammys, but to be honest, lately the Grammys haven't really been sitting so well with me. Like this year, The Weeknd wasn't nominated at all, considering that he had the best song of the year, which was Blinding Lights. No Grammys, no nominations, no nothing. So at this point, I don't know what to believe. Even though we know him for his pop hits, he started out in a heavy metal band called It's Alive. He was the lead man, he was the producer. <laughs> That's the time in which he met Dennis Pop at the Sharon Studios. Dennis Pop was a major, major, huge producer. He produced Ace of Base, the Backstreet Boys, and he became Max Martin's mentor. Max and Dennis were responsible for the whole birth of 
Backstreet Boys. Our sound, whatever encompassed the Backstreet Boys was Max and Dennis. Unfortunately, Dennis passed at the age of 35, tragically, and Max remembers him to this day. He dedicates every single award that he wins to him. He dedicates song videos. Actually, Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely is a song that Max Martin dedicated to him. He never misses a chance to remember him, pay tribute to him, and thank him. I'm gonna thank uh, Dennis Pop, my mentor, if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't be here today. I have to start with the late Dennis Pop. Without him and that place, I simply wouldn't be standing here tonight. Not only that, but every time Max wins an award, he takes the opportunity to thank everybody around him, everyone who's come before him, all the people who work with him. I want to thank all my co-producers co-writers and the artists who uh, make me look a whole lot better than I deserve. And just like Dennis did with him, he's also been a mentor to other producers like Ilya and Shellback. 23 of Max's songs have reached number one, but imagine the countless hits that haven't reached number one. Every time you think that you've heard all of Max's songs, that you know every single song that he's written, boom, you find out he also wrote that other song that you love. This happened to me a few days ago. I didn't know that he had written Behind These Hazel Eyes, which is my favorite Kelly Clarkson song. And yeah, he wrote it and produced it. Let me know down below in the comments which is your favorite Max Martin song. I would let you know mine, but I can't possibly pick one. If I had to pick one single one, I think I would have to say I want it that way. Melodic math is the formula that he's known for. It basically says that if you have one line, the next line has to mirror that line with the same amount of syllables. Also, there has to be balance in the song. So if you have a messy verse, your chorus has to be clean. Or if you have a very loud chorus, your verse has to be softer. For him, melody is king. And yes, of course, this means that sometimes you're gonna have to sacrifice the lyrics. He's criticized for this because they say that some of his songs don't make sense sense or the lyrics are shallow or then you have these sounds like la 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 na 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 and things like that but for him that's the most important part he says that instruments will change voices will change styles will change everything might change but the melody will remain the same and that's what everyone is going to remember 20 years from now when someone is singing along to your song or when they're remembering oh yeah that one song how did that go they're not going to remember every single word but they will definitely remember the melody. Nowadays, Max has been coming into the spotlight a little bit more because he has a musical called Anne Juliet, which premiered in London in 2019, and it features 30 of his songs. Unfortunately, as we all know right now, it's impossible to see these musicals, but hopefully in the future it will come back and I can't wait to see it. It was very interesting to me to hear in an interview that he is still, to this day, sometimes insecure about his work. There are many artists, to say the least, that want to work with him, and he has his reputation of being this big huge producer who makes all the hits and when people come into his studio they want a hit and they want that number one and he feels this pressure to deliver it to them he gets insecure about it and doesn't want to let them down and it's so interesting because you realize that it doesn't matter how successful you are this insecurity will always be there and especially as an artist I feel like it's even more of a thing that you get insecure because you're so vulnerable people hear your thoughts you put your whole heart into a song and then you have to show people and they have to judge it and say I like it or I don't like it he says that the singers do the hard work because they're the ones that have to go out and sing these songs he doesn't have to show his face to the world and stadiums while singing these really vulnerable lyrics so whenever you feel like you're insecure and you're scared that people won't like your music just remember it happens even to Max Martin. He's a songwriter and a producer. It's like what he was born to do, and he's so good at it. <laughs> and like every successful person out there, Max Martin also has haters. People who say that he's made pop music sound fabricated and shallow. But like one of the songs that he co-wrote says, haters gonna hate. Hate, hate, hate. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, it's fine. Hey, Max Martin, because I know for a fact that you're watching this, thank you so much for creating these amazing masterpieces. These songs that have made us fall in love, dance, cry, laugh, that have been basically the soundtrack of our lives. Thank you so much. I love you. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You are awesome. If you wanna see more of my videos, click here. Please do subscribe and like this video if you did like it. And I hope to see you on the next one. Mwah.